Hey everyone, it is John Lorden. And it is me, Danielle Hallen, and welcome back to another episode of Crime After Crime. Yeah, uh, Danielle, you should really eat before we record, because a few seconds ago, yeah, her stomach wanted to jump in on the show. <laughs> you may or may not hear it a few more times after this, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, just a, a warning, if you hear <laughs> if you hear a little grumbling monster. <laughs> Which is surprising, because I ate a ton of eggs and a ton of toast this morning for breakfast. No. I never, no. I never thought I'd be hungry again in that moment, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, and breakfast was a while ago danielle um <laughs> all right so first of all this is the first episode we've recorded since crime con so i just wanted to take a moment and first of all to thank everyone that came out to meet us it was so nice getting to meet you guys and then of course the first 10 group that we took for our special meetup drink up and I really enjoyed that. I didn't know it was going to go so long. <laughs> I thought originally we were going to try to keep it to an hour. We went two hours. Uh, I'm surprised. I thought it was even longer than that. We yeah. all just got along so great. We all have so many things that we relate on. I thought it was awesome. It was, it was such so a good cool. Time. Yeah, it was. It was also cool having all those other YouTubers that came along. We had uh, Amber Loves Mystery was there. Uh, Stephanie Harlow, Gray Hughes, John Crimes, just such a good group of people uh, to hang yeah. out with on top of the Crime After Crime fans. So really enjoyed it. Um, that's definitely one of the special memories for me. But Danielle, what what about you with CrimeCon? What's a good special memory from CrimeCon for you? Honestly, it was really, really awesome being able to work on the PI experience. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I felt so sick <laughs> before Thursday night because I was I was worried and I didn't know how things were going to go. And it was just a very different position to be in. Um, you know, getting to speak to so many people, I feel like we usually are either sitting in front of a microphone or a camera. And we're usually not talking face to face with people a lot about these cases, um, yeah. obviously, other than each other. So it was a really, really awesome experience to get to talk to so many people. We had like five different groups come in and out of our particular room and we got to have a giant discussion on a case. And that's something that I feel like we don't typically get to do. So that was that was really cool. It's definitely one of my favorites, but I, I have to agree with you. The meetup drink up was absolutely awesome because that's also, we never get to do things like that. I kept telling yeah. my husband afterwards, you know, we don't ever get the chance. We can obviously thank people over and over again on our channels and on you know the podcast, but being able to actually thank people face to face for supporting us and getting to sit down and talk to them, you know, I feel like so many people know who we are. The people that watch us, they know, but we know nothing about you guys. And so it was such a different experience, and it was so awesome. And getting to hear where all you guys were from, I don't know. I absolutely loved it. It was it was really great. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed all that too. And uh, I'm very proud of the PI experience, uh, just of being a part of that, of working with Sheila Wysocki, of trying to help uh, the Andreacchio family move that case forward. Uh, of course, uh, a few of the family members were actually there. That was particularly touching. Yeah. Um, I had actually several different encounters with uh, family members from different stories that I had covered in the past. And most of those encounters are really special to me, you know, to have someone come up and thank you for the coverage of, you know, their missing loved one or their murdered loved one. Um, it, it's a real touching moment. And, you know, Sarah Turney was there. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, and she kept coming by the table. Like, she wanted to see us, like, literally every day of the con. She wanted to come by. Um, <laughs> she was so sweet. She is, yeah. She's also got a new podcast that she's starting. So, you guys might want to check out um, her new podcast as well. But, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of special memories. But, of course, my favorite thing was sitting there with Danielle Hallen at the table giving out <laughs> searchlight pens. Yep. <laughs> searchlight pens, the remainder of the brain scratch pens. Yes, the last of the brain scratch pens, the crime after crime stress ball, giving out uh, autographs and all kinds of stuff. It was it was a good time. Of course, having Gray Hughes there and Mike Morford there. So the whole three men and a mystery crew was there as well. Uh, it was really a good time. And one thing that I actually found so fascinating is I wasn't I wasn't really sure how many people would be aware of crime after crime, you know, because yeah. it was we were on podcasters row. But I mean, last year we came as just YouTubers and, 
you know, we've obviously both been YouTubers and had our channels for years now. And so I wasn't sure how it would be. And almost every single person that came up was like, oh yeah, I watch your channel. I was like, oh, well, have you heard of our podcast? They're like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I already voted this month. And I was like, that <laughs> is awesome. Yes. I, was, I wasn't sure. It was great to see how many people watch both of our channels separately, but then absolutely love our monthly podcast. I thought yeah. it was so awesome. Also nice meeting new people that didn't necessarily know us. That's part yep. of the fun of being there is letting people know what you do and uh, hopefully getting them to listen. I was making people promise that they would <laughs> give it a listen uh, for one of the Crime After Crime stress balls. So I don't know if that'll really pay off or not, but it was <laughs> it was just fun to be able to, to do that. So uh, before we do get into today's stories, we've got a couple of things we want to touch on. First of all, we ran a photo caption contest, which basically we had a photograph from CrimeCon. We put it up on the Twitter feed at crime after pod. So if you're not following that on Twitter, you really should. You're, you're missing out some extra little fun things like this. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Danielle, <laughs> describe the picture for people that are listening mm. to us on the podcast today. Well, the great thing about this picture is that it's a disaster and it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get my husband's great at taking pictures, but he also takes at least like 50 yeah. You know, hoping to get the one great shot. But the great thing about that is it ends up with a bunch of really insane ones. And John's look on his face is absolutely hilarious. He is just looking dead at the camera with the most like, I'm so tired of this, like emotionless, <laughs> like what is going on kind of face. And yeah, then, halfway shocked. Like what? Exactly. What? Like what's going on? And then there's me and there's no surprise that I look like I'm in the middle of throwing some sort of fit. Like there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's something going on. I can't even tell. And I, I know myself, obviously, if I'm laughing or if I'm upset, I don't know what's going on, but it's it's hilarious. And it was so great to do yeah. this whole caption this photo contest because your responses were hilarious. Yeah, so we picked three of your responses and we'll be reaching back out to these people on Twitter to get their addresses. We're going to send you an autographed picture from both of us and thank you so much for participating in this, but let's get to the responses. So these aren't in any particular order. We just picked three winners. We just wanted to have three winners. Um, let's start with Janice Callis. What did she have to say, Danielle? She captioned it as people singing crime after crime, just like Cindy Lauper, Danielle joining in, and John sitting there thinking to himself, what have we done? <laughs> it was such a perfect caption because it does. It looks like it looks like I'm singing. I'm singing with them. Yeah, of course, on the video <laughs> version, you can see the picture we're talking about. Um, but what's really interesting about that, Janice, is it actually happened. It we, did. We the had, whole setup. <laughs> yeah, we had someone come up to the table and start singing time after time, but they sang it as crime after crime. And after the first 10 seconds, it kind of it kind of shocked me a little bit because I was like, what are they doing exactly? And then I got, oh, they're singing time after time, but they're singing as crime after crime. And then like 10 seconds later, they're still going on it. And I really did have the thought of, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> what is, what's going on? And meanwhile, I'm just belting it out with her. and We're just having the time yeah. of our life. Yeah, it was just exactly. perfect. It was so yeah. great. Janice, I don't know if you were there, but you nailed it. So you are absolutely getting an autograph from us. Uh, gray, black, gray. What did gray, black, gray have to say, Danielle? Oh boy, this one's my favorite. True crime YouTubers reacting to being asked to do a Chris Watts case video. Don't get me started and please don't start this. Oh man, and there was a lot of talk about this there. Um, it, you know, we had a lot more YouTubers there this year. Danielle and I were the first two in 2018, yeah. but this year there was six, if I remember right, that were there. Um, so, Sounds about right. Yeah. So, uh, and amongst some conversation I had, not with all of them, but with a few of them, this did come up uh, several times. And at least in that circle, um, we're kind of just saying we're not going to do Chris Watts videos because mm -hmm. yeah, they can get you a lot of views 
Um, but that's not exactly what we're here for. We're here to try to help cases. And there are people that seem to be doing those videos specifically just to get views. Yeah. It's a topic that you can just do over and over and over. And uh, it, it does happen. So. <laughs> yep. And that hit it nail on the head, too, because I think that would be both of our reactions if you had yeah. asked us. Because yeah. even just reading that, my eyes kind of like rolled back in my head a little bit. So <laughs> it works out perfect. Yep. I'm going to take this next one. This, this was my personal pick. It was by Bray. Hope I'm saying that. Or Bree. What do you think? There's only one I would, E. I would still say Brie, but yeah. we all know I pronounce everything wrong, so I wouldn't I wouldn't go with that. Well, that's why I ask you, and then I just go with the opposite. <laughs> so, okay, Bray. Um, <laughs> when you find out that your prime suspect is Elmo, uh, Brie I, or Bray, thank you so much for sending that in, because that just rang right to my heart. Yes, absolutely. And especially with my expression, I do look kind of shocked and bewildered. And I was when I did the research for that. Exactly. Case. And I was telling John earlier, you know, if you went to that particular, you know, episode on YouTube and watched it back, I'm sure the second John mentioned Elmo, that would have been the screenshot. If you could have grabbed the screen in that yeah. moment, this is exactly what we would have looked like. So yeah. Yeah. it works perfectly. Absolutely. And a big thank you to Ashley for suggesting that photo caption contest. We really enjoyed that. All right. So if you want to see that and also get notified when new episodes come and occasionally I'll drop a picture of Danielle making a funny face in there. Be sure to follow the Twitter account at Crime After Pod. You can also vote on the current episode there for the first seven days after it drops. Or you guys can also vote on YouTube. We've been through this. We finally figured it out. All you have to do is hover your mouse over the screen or just click the screen and a little I will appear in the corner, the letter I, and you click on that and you go ahead and you vote for who your favorite was. And that leads us into... Voting <laughs> results with Danielle for episode Disorderly Dads. We, we really need a theme song at some point. For we that, do. There yeah. needs to be something. <laughs> we weren't sure how it was going to go. No. At all. No. We had no idea. Usually we're both pretty good at kind of gauging things. But the results are Twitter poll. I won with 61% and John at 39%. On YouTube, I had 57% and John had 42%. So that means... We are tied again, five and five so far. And, you know, I was really hoping that when we got to the 12th episode um, that we would be able to determine a winner, but we could go six and six. So I don't know if we're we going to sure have to figure could. out. Yeah, we might have to figure out something else. Or should we only go to the 11th episode and then in the 12th episode announce the winner? This puts know. the pressure on. Yeah, yeah. We got we got <laughs> things to figure out here. Um, but we are once again tied five to five. So that means I am handing over the crime after crime mug to Danielle. Oh, thank wow. you. Yeah. Delicious coffee. We we nailed it this time. <laughs> yeah. Do you like what I put in there? I, I, I put an Almond Joy creamer in there. You Delicious. Like that? Almond Joys are my favorite in case any of you are you know, curious as to what candy to give me if you ever see me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think she's putting I that out. Joyce. <laughs> I think she's putting that out because Jenny actually caught on that I like beer and at the meetup drank up, all of a sudden John got a little six pack from someone, which uh, I thought was really nice. So yeah, if you want to make Danielle as happy, I guess bring her a six pack of Almond Joy. Of Almond Joy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> not, we are not sponsored by Almond Joy. <laughs> All right. Um, so today's topic is stolen on the 4th of July. And in doing research for this, I bumped into some information that I thought was pretty important. And we care about you guys. And I wanted to share this information with you. Uh, I found it at idtheftcenter.org. And we noticed some different trends that we saw about crimes that happen on the 4th of July. But this stuff in particular can happen to you. They have an article there on how to avoid 4th of July scams. Holidays are an especially active time for scammers. Here are some of the more popular phishing attempts, scam tactics, and frauds. Number one, patriotic emails and social media posts. Fis phishing, if I can speak correctly, <laughs> messages and fraudulent social media posts can tug at your heartstrings. In this case, it may be more such as an active duty or veteran scam, political or even an election scam. Avoid the temptation to impulse click on any untrustworthy source. 
Yeah. And I mean, obviously it's good any time of the year to kind of be cautious of that, but just know that these scams are going to ramp up in particular because of the 4th of July and they're going to be themed to try to get your attention for that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, if you do want to donate to a, a cause like that, I find that a real safe thing to do, if you're not great at checking the link that's actually been emailed to you, open a web browser and search the company out yourself and exactly. go go through it that way because typically these scams are going to have links that aren't you wouldn't find necessarily by searching on Google because they don't want to be busted. So um, that might be a good thing to help you out a little bit. But yeah, always, always be cautious with that. Number two, shopping. There are incredible retail deals advertised during the July 4th holiday. And that can also mean bogus web coupons and sales links to click. Protect yourself from online shopping scams by only doing business with trusted sources, using a secure payment method for your purchases, and steering clear of, quote, time is running out, impulse shopping scams. This is why I go to Target in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't run into these problems online. <laughs> no scam at Target. <laughs> And then number three is firework scams. If you live in a state that allows citizens to shoot their own fireworks, beware, roadside stands and temporary shops make sense when selling a product that is only popular a few times a year, but that also means you're handing your payment information to someone who may be skipping town in a day or two. If it's feasible, cash may be the way to go instead of giving a transient business person your payment information. And this is probably my favorite one out of all of them because this is not something you're going to be thinking about. You know, yeah. we don't really realize that these people are only here for a certain period of time. There are actually a lot of states that only allow fireworks period to be sold during certain months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously we all want to have fun during the holidays. We want to have our sparklers. We want to have the things that, you know, make Fourth of July fun, but definitely, definitely be careful. And there are plenty of cases that I ran into while researching this where a lot of sketchy things were happening surrounding yeah. fireworks stands. So yeah, absolutely. If you're going to go to a stand, I, th I think this is making a good point. Just just take cash with you, and you know it's so easy because credit card transactions can happen basically with just a cell phone nowadays. Yep. Um, but you want to be extra safe with that. Coincidentally, or not coincidentally, um, I've had issues just using credit cards even at establishments, you know, oh, uh, yeah. at a place where I was getting my hair cut and there was a rogue employee there and they basically captured the card information and used it for other charges. And so it, it does happen in other situations, but at least there, it was really easy to track and to go back to and to talk to the management and say, hey, there's extra charges and you know this is the last place the card was used and they were able to see that those charges were rung through their machine can't do that when you're going back to the parking lot where the trailer was <laughs> and the trailer is now gone <laughs> yeah yeah so uh and that is only three they had other points on there as well you can learn much more about this at idtheftcenter.org they can help you stay safe this fourth of july and the rest of the year the itrc is a nonprofit organization established to support victims of identity theft in resolving their cases and to bring broaden public education and awareness. They have free help options and even a free app. So check them out at www.idtheftcenter.org. And that brings us to the big topic for the day. Danielle, you ready with your story? I am more than ready. All <laughs> right. We are here for Stolen on the 4th of July. <laughs> That's right. All right. Now, I know this episode is about robberies on the 4th of July, and that is what my story is about. Good. But Good start. as we know, through my struggle of research, I found out that this story, or at least this kind of story, is actually a lot more difficult to find than I originally thought, which is a great thing because you don't want these sorts of crimes to happen. But it's not a great thing when you're going up against a research wizard <laughs> like John Lorden. Uh -oh. So through all of my anxiety over finding a story and sleepless nights realizing I would have to hand my coffee cup over to John again, uh -oh. I realized there is one place that never lets me down. There is a place in America where on any day at any time, people uh -oh. take the word free way too seriously and i already know there are plenty of you out there who know exactly what i'm talking about are you, are you talking about walmart walmart <laughs> oh my goodness oh i knew my. you would guess it oh my goodness i can't believe that 
that was not rehearsed people i had no idea she was talking about walmart until she said that wow and that's what's so great about it <laughs> so crime theft especially is a major issue at all walmarts to ever exist we've already spoken about this a few times it's to the point where you can actually find hundreds of articles about it online where authorities share their confusion and fear over the rapidly growing crime rates there's actually even one walmart in tulsa oklahoma that gets regularly scheduled visits from the city police department to pick up all of the suspects that have been arrested at the store. Whoa, that's and insane. I'm not, I'm not even just talking about one trip a day. They take multiple scheduled trips a day to this Walmart. Wow. It's concerning enough that many interviews have actually been done with criminals busted for Walmart crimes. These people have been asked why on earth they choose to steal from Walmart of all places. You know, why not Target? Why not the mall? And the answer is always the same, because it's easy to get away with it. Which seems to be true since Walmart actually loses about $3 billion in stolen revenue every year. And that's only a statistic from 2016, so I can only imagine wow. what it might be like now. Now, I so haven't been to a Walmart in a while, but oh do, they, boy. do they still have the greeter at the door? They oh, they sure do, which is what's going to make this story so much more unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I always kind of thought the greeter is almost a little bit of a security checkpoint as well, or someone that could at least be watching for it. Well, to add to this, at our particular Walmart, actually in the past couple of Walmarts that I've been to at different locations, they have someone now that sits at the door and checks your receipt before you're even allowed to leave. Okay, okay. So sure enough, when this light bulb went off in my head, <laughs> I did a quick search, Walmart did not let me down. So the 4th of July is a time to eat good food, watch beautifully crafted fireworks shows, and for families to get together and enjoy the freedoms that we have, Every Walmart in America is cleared out of hot dogs, burgers, sparklers, alcohol, but one Walmart in Lilburn, Georgia, ended up being cleared out of car batteries. Oh, what? While spending time with loved ones is a staple for the holiday, one family came together in 2018 with entirely different intentions. Walmart employees were scrambling to keep items on the shelf, but a loss prevent, oh my goodness gracious, hello, can I speak? <laughs> a loss prevention employee thought it was really strange that almost every car battery in the store had disappeared. When they checked surveillance footage, they were shocked at what they saw. An unidentified couple pulled up to the exterior garage area of the Lilburn Walmart in their white minivan at around 7.30 p.m. that night. Now, employees already knew exactly what they were about to witness, but they were not prepared for who was going to be acting out this crime. Two adults hopped out of the vehicle, a man and a woman, but they soon were followed by four little girls. Oh, man. One by one, the entire family walked up to the secured gate that was outside of the Walmart garage, and all four of the little girls began pulling at the gate in an attempt to open it. The unidentified male involved began to tamper with the lock a little bit before getting very frustrated and finally opening up the trunk of the van, taking out a sledgehammer along with multiple other tools, and he attempted this to use this to bust open the cage. It took a whole lot of effort, but after a short period of time, the group finally gained access to the storage, and each child proceeded to take turns running batteries from the cage to the trunk of the car. Even the youngest child was seen physically dragging a battery. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever held a car battery before. Heavy. Don't let it size fool you. Yeah, yeah, it's, they're very heavy. It's pretty heavy. And on top of that, the young girls definitely knew they were doing something wrong because the oldest appeared to stop every once in a while to post up as a lookout. Now, after a decent period of time running these batteries to the car, they loaded up and they pulled away. Authorities were contacted by Walmart loss prevention, I said it right this time, and immediately <laughs> police knew what the group's intentions were likely. Basically, the car batteries cost about seventy four eighty eight. Yeah. And it's very easy to resell them for close to that price, especially brand spanking new. There's even recycling centers that take batteries. They don't just take them, they'll pay you for them. So essentially, the group stole anywhere from 50 to almost 90 car batteries. I can't seem to get a definitive answer. This means they could have been paid, if paid in full price, anywhere from $3,750 to $6,750. Authorities were shocked that an adult couple would use their child to steal items in a public store, but unfortunately, just as crimes in Walmart are increasing, the use of children in crimes is increasing as well. 
They couldn't identify who was in the video at first, but after sending still images from the video out to news stations, many people reported that this was an entire family that was typically seen panhandling all around the county. So authorities decided to keep their eyes on junkyards, places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, hoping that someone would pop up selling a large amount of car batteries. And sure enough, within a few days, a local junkyard just so happened to buy a whole crap load of batteries from a guy matching the description of the man in the video. Lucky for authorities, this particular junkyard, which this isn't incredibly common, but it required sellers to show ID and all transactions were fully recorded. So this ended up leading them to 34-year-old Dino Vlado. Oh, I thought his last name was going to be Bogle. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, the whole family was involved. Wow. So he actually already had an outstanding warrant for a recent hit and run incident. And despite having Dino's name and information, they couldn't find him and they still couldn't identify the woman in the footage. And they still weren't sure if the children were even his own. Whoa. So you would think at this point that it would be easy to locate Dino and arrest him, but it's not that easy because as of this point in time, they have still not located anybody in the video. I have no idea if they were homeless, if they jumped around from house to house, but from what I've seen, there has been absolutely zero updates on if the entire group was ever found. He's right now facing charges if they found him or if they ever find him. I can't find the answer. Um, he's facing charges of theft by taking, theft by deception, and four counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Yeah. No one's yeah. come forward to claim the four children. No one has come forward to identify this woman. All we know is that Dino was last seen in Sandy Springs, Georgia, but that's pretty much it. So apparently these criminals are onto something because not only is it easy to steal from Walmart, but if you do things right, you can get away with it for a very long time. Wow, man, apparently so. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if this is basically going on in other states at this point, if they're oh, just taking- absolutely. Yeah, taking that same racket and, and moving it around. Um, but you, you'd think that if they know who he is, they could at least run a record search to see if he's on birth certificates and then try to track it down that way. But That's what you would think. I mean, I've, I've seen a picture of him. They do have a picture of him up in all the articles that I've seen, you know, all four of them. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I find it so interesting that nobody is coming forward. I mean, obviously... <sighs> Family probably won't rat out family, but mm. I mean, nobody is coming forward. You would think these kids are in school. Someone would recognize them. You would think they had friends. Someone would recognize them. Someone living near them. I mean, I know they were panhandling, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're homeless. Right. I mean, they, it looked like they had a nice van. They all were dressed very nice. Um, I've got no idea. But the one thing I cannot get over is... If they stole almost 90 batteries, how, I mean, even with six of them. Yeah. How on earth? That had to have taken at least 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. At the yeah. very least. And you're meaning to tell me that nobody at Walmart noticed this was going on? Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's so, you know, I'd be looking for little girls that have buff Popeye arms. Like really oh, yeah. big, <laughs> really big oh, yeah. little buff arms. Because I can't believe just thinking of them carrying out batteries like that. I just, it's, those things weigh a lot. Yeah. That and is, I mean, and that's probably only going to make it take even longer. And one yeah. of them was very little and she had to drag the battery. So that's not moving very fast. I mean, I, it's like I was saying, you can't even get out of Walmart without having your receipt checked. Right, but they're out right. back just look. <laughs> Spending a good 20 minutes loading batteries in their car, not a single person noticed. And they don't even look phased. The oldest girl looked a little concerned for a while, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you've also got footage of this. So it's like, you know, that that camera system, while it might be helping you out at least see what's, what's, what's happening, it's not catching the detail they need to really nail this family. That's, no. uh, yeah, that's terrible. That's terrible feel bad for for kids being raised in a situation like that exactly and that's what authorities were saying that they were just so shocked yeah yeah so shocked it is it's exactly like the bogle family maybe yeah. they just don't know any better i mean yeah. you could tell they the oldest girl she was concerned she looked nervous a handful of times but yeah wow i love that uh <laughs> 
it was a clear giveaway that you were talking about Walmart when um, <laughs> you talked about the price of each battery and you said 88 cents. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That's so true. I hadn't even <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> uh, interestingly, also, um, I think, doesn't Grand Theft kick in at five grand? Uh, grand mm, Theft charges? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so depending on that range of, of prices, mm -hmm. they might actually be in the Grand Theft territory just for that one particular family battery heist. Wow. I don't know, and it's so crazy too because they mentioned him, but I mean, I didn't see mentioned anywhere if the woman was going to be charged with anything. The whole thing is just very, very confusing because I kept searching endlessly. I'm like, I need answers. I need to know if he went to prison. I need to know what happened to these kids, and I couldn't find anything. That was yeah. my one hesitation on this on this particular story. What year is that was this? There seems to be no closure. This was just last year. Oh, 2018. 2018. Mm. So I mean, it's almost been a year. You guys are like at the year mark here, <laughs> and they yeah. haven't been found as far as I know. I couldn't find a single thing. Wow. Well, don't go to that Walmart if you're looking for batteries. Apparently, nope. um, they're going to be out for a little while. Yeah, uh, they're all gone. Wow. <laughs> Crazy, Danielle. Well, last year must have been a good year because uh, my crime is actually from July 4th, 2018 as well. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go ahead and roll into that one. Now, I know most people would say they love some form of music, but Chicago rapper Dexter Gore Jr., known as Famous Dex, may have the biggest super fan of them all. In the few years since Famous Dex came onto the music scene, he has charted on the Billboard Hot 100 with songs like Pick It Up and Japan. He's gone viral on YouTube and performed live all over the United States with multiple appearances in his hometown of Chicago. Zamarcus Devin Scott is an 18-year-old fan of Famous Dex. His Facebook profile says he's also known as Mojo Huncho, which as best as I can understand it means something like the lucky thug. <laughs> and I'm having to, I'm looking at like Urban Dictionary and I'm trying to, yeah. So I think, I think it means the lucky thug. I don't know. I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Mojo Huncho, uh, which after hearing today's story, you might believe is actually true. So Marcus's profile says he's originally from Houston, Texas, lives in Texarkana, Texas, and that he went to Arkansas high school. Texarkana is actually two twin cities that neighbor each other, but they're in different states, Texas and Arkansas. So I'm not sure if he actually lived on the Texas side, as his Facebook page explains, because Arkansas High School is in Arkansas, and his profile says that he was at that school. Uh, his profile also states that he studied at Nunn College and University, NUN, <laughs> and that he worked at Mail Today which is a digital and print publication specializing in news from India. So, Danielle, I'm not sure uh, how much we can trust the information from Mojo Huncho's Facebook page. No, probably. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. <laughs> but thankfully, numerous publications have written about Zamarcus over the past year. It was July 4th, 2018. Zamarcus wasn't at a barbecue or a local fireworks show. He was fighting a bad case of FOMO or fear of missing out. Zamarcus wanted to see Famous Dex perform on July 4th. The only problem is that Zamarcus lived in Texarkana and Famous Dex was performing in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois, which was over 700 miles away. Zamarcus, who later admitted that he had been smoking synthetic marijuana for at least the previous week leading up to this, and Danielle does a face palm. Oh, boy. <laughs> this can't ever lead to anything good. <laughs> yeah. Usually people are eating other people when this happens, so I'm concerned. Uh-oh. No, I don't, I don't think we're going to go that far. Uh, he also admitted that he had been concocting a plan for the past month. And he might have not had it all figured out, but he was ready to act. It was around 2 a.m. on July 4th, and Zamarcus had been sitting on his bicycle for about four hours staring at his personal freedom. His ticket to Chicago and the concert he so desperately wanted to go to was right on the other side of a fence at Texarkana Regional Airport. A 44-seat American Eagle twin-engine commercial jet was just sitting there waiting to fly Zamarcus off away from Texarkana into the concert of his dreams. Finally, around 2.30 a.m., Zamarcus made his move. He threw his bicycle in a ditch, jumped the fence, and headed right for the jet. 
<laughs> yeah. Now, unfortunately for Zamarcus, airport security personnel noticed someone jumping over the fence and they called local authorities. Officers from the Texarkana Police Department arrived and found Demarcus sitting in the pilot seat of the plane. Zamarcus, who is not a licensed pilot, uh, I don't think they teach that at Nunn College. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, he was questioned about his lack of experience or training to fly a commercial jet by the responding officers. Uh, he told them he believed it was just a matter of pushing buttons and pulling levers. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. How now, old was he? Uh, he's 18. I'm shocked he even got into the pilot seat. How did this happen? Don't they That's, lock those things up? It's at an airport. <laughs> I mean, you know, all people talk about is airport security, and he made it over the fence. I'm, I mean, I'm sure security was trying to take care of their safety and not approach this man. But how in the actual heck did he get into this airplane? Yeah. How was the door open? How did he know to open it if it was closed? There, I mean, there's that a takes lot. some guts. Yeah, there's a lot of questions here. Yeah, yeah, it does take guts, doesn't it? He's scaling a fence. He's running for a plane. I don't even know how you get inside of it. Is the door just open? And even if it is, don't you need like a ladder to get up to it or something? <laughs> that's, I just That's what I was going to ask. You would need a ladder typically to get onto a plane. And I mean... On top of that, I know there's a door there protecting the, you know, the yeah. area where the pilot sits. I mean, he would have had to know how to get into there. And it's not like there's just a door knob. It's not like you just twist it and pull it no. open. I mean, I just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed I mean, at him. I'm scared to get into cars that are worth more than like $20,000. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me ever just being like, oh, just hopping yeah. in this plane real no, quick. It's a commercial jet. Why not? <laughs> I'm gonna go, I know, I'm gonna not, go. not even a private plane, like a big commercial jet. Yeah, I'm just going to go pull some levers and, you know. <laughs> Push gonna... some buttons and make it 700 miles away. Right. Well, And where are you going to land it? <laughs> like, do you think you just fly to Chicago and like, oh, there's a road. I'm just going to put it down on the road here and go see the concert. And then I'll fly back home after. <laughs> yeah, because it'll still be there because nobody will think that's strange. Right, right. Not a single person. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and obviously you can't lock it up. So what good is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like attaches it to a bike rack. <laughs> right, right. How do you keep it there? I mean, if people can just get into the plane and jump in the pilot seat, someone else is going to fly somewhere else. <laughs> Nobody touch my plane. Do not enter. <laughs> so many, so many logic problems with this. I know. Uh, he was arrested and charged with attempted commercial burglary and attempted theft of property. Both charges that Scott faced are punishable by three to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $10,000. His bail was set at 25 grand. The Texarkana Regional Airport Director, Mark Mellinger commented, it was very surprising. It would even be conceived here in Texarkana, Texas. I've never heard of this happening before at all. It turned out all good. We apprehended the person and hopefully he won't do it again or no one else will. How about we lock the doors on the planes? That's probably <laughs> a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we take a little extra precaution there? I mean, I watched people get totally searched and patted down for having been yay mix while trying to get into the airport, but they're not even going to lock their planes up on the <laughs> runway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Zamarcus, represented by public defender Jason Mitchell at a hearing in August of 2018, originally pled innocent. Defender Mitchell then requested a mental evaluation to see if Scott was capable of standing trial. In December of 2018, a psychologist with the Southwest Arkansas Counseling and Mental Health Center filed a report stating Zamarcus was competent that he understands the charges facing him, the criminality of the alleged conduct, and has the ability to assist his lawyer in a defense. In January of 2019, a plea deal was struck. DeMarcus pled guilty in return for two five-year terms of probation being served concurrently, paying a $1,000 fine and participating in a mental health treatment. He's also prohibited from stepping foot on the Texarkana Regional Airport property while on probation. Uh, Zamarcus was able to, and I got to apologize here because I think his name has changed in my script a little bit. Uh, it is Zamarcus, but in some places I'm seeing Demarcus. Uh, Zamarcus was able to avoid jail time, but believe it or not, that's not the happy ending to this story. 
famous decks learned about the story and things are taking an even crazier turn. Here is a clip of famous decks from the TMZ website to tell us all about it. Once I heard this story and I saw it, but you know how like nowadays that in the internet is so much bull crap that I thought it was fake. It was really real. Yeah. So, but that being said, is um, I'm flying, I'm flying him out. I'm a, I'm a fly him out. Uh, I'm gonna put him in the, the the nicest, biggest hotel in in LA. I'm gonna give him no tickets to the show. He gonna stand next to my DJ. So that means he gonna come in with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I'm flying out to LA. I'm gonna take him shopping. You know, and I'm pay, I'm gonna pay for all his the fines, all that. So, Danielle. Oh, good grief. First of all, <laughs> do you think that Famous Dex might have been smoking some synthetic marijuana? <laughs> Honestly, without train of thought, probably. <laughs> I mean, I understand the sentiment here. You know, he really, really wanted to see this concert. He really supports this rapper. But since when is that a valid excuse to try to steal a commercial jet. I mean, I I want to go to the gym a lot, but if my car broke down, I wouldn't go and carjack someone real quick to get to get to the gym, you know? And it, it's like being the gym, the gym after that being like, "You know what? She's dedicated free membership for life." Like, <laughs> right, no. Right. You know what I'm saying? What kind of logic is that? And he's about to put him up in the the biggest hotel and take him shopping. Biggest, Fascinating. Yeah, best hotel <laughs> in LA and I'm not going to give him tickets. He's going to be on stage with me basically uh during the show. Yeah, I love the shopping thing too. That just that just lights it's me just, up. It's just it's just random. Yeah. You know, it's I just don't It's just real random. I don't really have even like friends of mine I'm sure, I think maybe this happens to ladies more. None of my friends say, hey, John, I'm going to take you shopping. Or like, hey, let's let's go shopping. I haven't said that to anyone probably in my entire life. <laughs> well, neither of us is famous Dex. Um, but there's more to this. It looks like Huncho's mojo may have run out, Danielle. Remember. Huncho's mojo. <laughs> <laughs> remember, he's on probation which means he would have to get permission to leave the state and his prosecutors are not happy with the offer from famous decks. Oh, Chief, unbelievable. Yeah. Chief Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Chuck Black said to allow defendant Scott to go to California at the expense of the individual Scott had planned to go see when he tried to steal the plane would be rewarding his criminal activity and would send the wrong kind of message, both to Scott and to others. Scott's attempted theft was unsuccessful, but some other criminal might advance further in such an attempt, which would certainly pose a danger to innocent people. Oh my goodness, finally some common sense. Yeah, finally some common sense, but don't hold on to that too long because I think oh, even, boy. even this guy loses a nut in here somewhere. <laughs> but oh no. <laughs> we'll, let's keep going. Some sites are reporting that Famous Dex is now going to cover DeMarcus's $1,000 fine. The prosecutor isn't happy with that one either. I don't like the idea of the rapper paying the defendant's fine, Black said. The fine is part of the punishment imposed by Judge Jones. If that happens, I intend to file a petition to ask that a special condition of probation be entered and enforced, prohibiting the defendant from attending any rap concert during his probationary term. The law provides that the court may require a defendant to refrain from frequenting designated places, and I intend to ask for that in this case. That seems a little bit extra. It, it kind of does, doesn't it? Like I, it does. It it takes this into a whole different place. Like ooh, that darn rap music. <laughs> Blame rap for everything. You're never going back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna let you go to any of the rap concerts. <laughs> yeah, uh, he did. He he lost a nut too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. He just he went off the edge. Like he was he was making sense. I get it. Don't let him fly out to California and go shopping with famous tax. <laughs> But then it just took this weird turn. Yeah. What's next? Uh, we're going to come to your house and get your cassette yep. tapes. That <laughs> rap music. Your iTunes is canceled. Yeah. Come on, man. So it looks like Zamarcus's best bet is to pay the fine himself, enjoy some local rap shows, and wait five years to take Famous Dex up on that offer, or hope that Famous Dex plans a tour that brings him to Zamarcus's hometown. 
You know, and that was one of my questions earlier on. Typically, when someone is going to have a concert, it's not normally just one. Normally, it is some type of tour. And yeah. he's a he's a pretty large rapper, so I can't imagine that this one show in Chicago, seven hundred whole miles away, was the only show. I mean, something about that makes this seem even more strange to me. Yeah, you can no, you can find this guy. Uh, he 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 tours around enough. And interestingly, I tried to find information about the specific show. Like I wanted to see where it was and all that. Yeah, I found information about another show that happened in Chicago a week or two earlier that was canceled. And I can't even quite find a specific show that was happening on the 4th of July. But, you know, it could have been that it was a smaller show or a smaller venue and it's not on the touring pages. Or it could be that the synthetic marijuana was just See, hitting them. that's where I'm kind of leaning <laughs> with this right now because, I mean, I'm already questioning all of his decisions. You know, <laughs> starting from him, you know, just sitting on his bike. He had to ride his bike, first of all, all the way to the airport. And then he right. really, in his mind, said, this is a good idea. And then he I'm sat getting, on the bike for four hours, remember. I'm getting on that plane. You yeah. know, see... I'm just, that's, that's what I was saying when it's, you know, 700 miles away in Chicago, there's no way this is the only show. I feel like something was lost in translation here. <laughs> well, many things. So, and if we're, if we're treading out of the scope of reality, like we seem to be with this story, maybe in his mind, just him landing the plane at famous Dex's pad was going to be enough to, Hey, will you do a show for me when, you know, I brought, brought this whole plane. <laughs> I flew here by myself. <laughs> you have yeah. to do Was something. Was he going to pick up me. his friends? He had forty-four seats. He could have picked up some friends, and they could have had a whole audience just for a private show. I don't know. I couldn't find information to support that there was actually a show that happened there. But uh, you heard it straight from Famous Dex. He's very aware of the case. I mean, he he didn't he didn't mention that there wasn't. But I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. And and from what I could see, he does he does seem to perform, you know, it's it's his hometown. So he does seem to perform there locally. There might have been some smaller show that just, you know, the internet has swallowed up for some reason and I can't find. But well, as usual, we have other stories to cover with you guys about this crazy phenomenon of crimes related to the fourth of July. Danielle, you want to get this started? I sure do, because this is probably hands down my favorite story that I found. And I was actually going to do this as my real story, but, you know, no legal charges were pressed or anything. So I felt it didn't necessarily fit in. And I wanted something, you know, where charges, they happened, even though Dino never faced them, at least that I know of. Um, a man named Rich went with his family to celebrate the 4th of July in Florida at New Smyrna Beach. His father was a local and the entire family was very familiar with the area. So when they had to take a break from the beach so their son could take a nap at their house that was a block and a half away, they knew it would be safe to leave their beach gear behind. Dun, dun, dun. Or was it? <laughs> <laughs> For an hour and a half, after an hour and a half, Rich's dad suggested someone check on the items because while they would be safe, the beach patrol might think they had been abandoned and likely take them down off of the beach. Rich was the one that offered to go back and check their gear. He was he was the dad. Well, he, he anyways, I explained it. He's there's a grandfather and then the dad. It's confusing. Rich is the only name in the story that anyone would release. But either way, he's the one that went. And after he got there, he noticed that he couldn't find their canopy anywhere. It may okay. have taken, you know, boogie boards, the canopy, chairs, toys. They had kids. It was a whole family. And he panicked and at first thought, you know, patrol definitely took this. But after a few more seconds of searching, he managed to see his beach chairs off in the distance. Good, right? Right. No, not good, because they were being loaded up into his family's beach cart by two unknown women. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He pulled out his phone and he approached the women, assuming they maybe were just trying to help. They had started to struggle taking the canopy fully down. So as a joke, he asked them if the items were theirs and if they needed help. <laughs> he was expecting, you know, oh, no, we're just trying to help someone. But that's not what happened. The woman said the items did, in fact, belong to them. They just didn't know how to break down the canopy and asked if he knew how to do it. <laughs> this is, f <laughs> yeah, this is finally when Rich responded with, yes, I do know how to break down the canopy because the canopy is mine. So again, at this point, he's assuming they're going to apologize, probably be embarrassed, maybe say they accidentally were taking down the wrong beach setup, but they didn't. 
They stuck to their guns and they argued that the items were theirs. They even pointed to Rich's son's favorite beach toys, claiming they were theirs. Mm. Wow. They eventually got aggressive towards him and cracked his phone screen in an attempt to stop his recording using, and this is my favorite part of the story, right? This this woman jumps around the side of the canopy, tries to smack the phone. She's gnashing her teeth at him, and her threat is, I'll grab your d- <laughs> What? <laughs> I kid you not. I'm not lying. I am not lying. It's on video. <laughs> what a terrible woman. Uh, Rich has actually responded to this threat saying that he's flattered by the offer, but the chemistry just wasn't there. Mm. They eventually went on. Uh, they The woman said they had to call someone named Pat, that this woman named Pat would explain everything, that the items were theirs, and they, they got so mad after threatening him a few times, they just went back to the parking lot. Police had been called by Rich's wife because he ended up sending her the video. But the problem is that when the woman smacked the phone, it, it ended the video. So the wife mm. just thought he just had the crap smacked out of him and then everything went dark. So she's panicking. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. They get there. Rich is absolutely fine. All their items are absolutely fine. The women are wandering around. They had also threatened to throw his phone in the grass, which was strange because they're at the beach. And Rich these, decided, these women yeah, make the worst threats possible. <laughs> no, I'm throwing your phone in the grass. <laughs> Literally at the oh beach. Oh, no. My phone's in the grass. <laughs> I know. But he, he decided he didn't want to press charges. They never yeah. actually got any of the items. He stopped the midway. He, you know, there could have been assault charges, according to the police. But he mm. says it was not worth filing charges over. His phone screen was cracked because of her ring. But everything was fine. And honestly, he said he thought it was a funnier situation than anything. And their names actually never, ever were released from what yeah. I've seen. But yeah. they they threatened to sue, I think, the first I think like Fox or someone put the video out on the news. Yeah. It's all, it's already all over YouTube. Um, and they got so mad. And everyone's like, no one even identified you. If the shoe fits, wow. you can't do that. You can't claim something <laughs> that you don't want to be a part of that you aren't even tied to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they might have been smoking synthetic marijuana. Absolutely. This seems like it's... <laughs> <laughs> this seems like it's something that's getting yeah. real popular. <laughs> if if you guys want to stay safe on July fourth, don't don't get into the synthetics. That's uh yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow, gosh. Danielle. I Man. thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. They should write a book of threats. How to threaten people. <laughs> that is, I know. You know, the story was your... already the story was already so great. And then I got to that one threat and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> like that would never cross my mind as me saying as a threat to someone. But yeah, I'm going to take off my shoe. <laughs> exactly. <What>? OK. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, it, honestly, it sounds like when I'm arguing with Raylan, my daughter, and she's five. She'll be like, you know what? And I'm like, what? And she's like, exactly. And I'm like, oh, good threat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't scare me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, um, she is adorable. I was so happy to get to Thank spend you. a little time with her at CrimeCon. <laughs> and she is like a little clone of you. It was... <laughs> It was so fun to see because I don't get to see like what your arms do when you're speaking and stuff because I'm usually yeah. looking at you through this little window. Yeah. But uh, when we were at the uh, meetup drink up, seeing when you were like really in a swing of talking to people, you're super expressive with your body. Like you're yeah. moving around and your arms are oh, moving. Oh, I'm flailing everything possible. Yeah. <laughs> and she does the same thing, but she's she like does. this little tiny version. Yeah. I know. John walked out of the um, elevator and she had been so excited to finally get to meet him. She'd seen him, you know, on our Skype call before, but she'd never actually met him. And he walked out and her whole body, she just like threw her arms up. She was like, John Lorden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's like your biggest fan. Exactly. We're twins. We're like she your is. two biggest fans. Oh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. We got another crazy story for you guys. This is from what I call the why isn't this solved file which the battery story fits into also i don't know i know maybe these stories just don't get solved around the fourth but uh, this is another one from 2018 this story is from patch.com cypress texas at approximately 4 30 a.m on june 29th a fireworks trailer containing about 125 pounds of fireworks valued at eighty thousand dollars was taken wow the whole trailer 
Surveillance video shows a white male arrive in a black Chevrolet truck, hook up the fireworks stand, and drive off. He literally stole the whole fireworks stand. Investigators then learned of another fireworks trailer being stolen a day earlier. And they also had footage from a local Home Depot where two men walked out with a $2,000 generator without paying for it and took off in the black Chevy truck. The investigators traced the truck and located the owner. Mm. He had lent the vehicle to a friend (gasps) during the period of the crimes. But... I couldn't find any information about this being solved. It's like, wh- what? <laughs> I know. It is. It's exactly like the battery story. You're like, yeah. okay, but then what happened? <laughs> yeah. We know who owns the truck. He knows who borrowed it. And we can't solve this. Like, what? what's going on? Or is Could- maybe it's just the media is falling down on reporting it. I don't know. But I could not find any way that that was solved. But I could thought you- it was pretty gutsy to, to not just take some fireworks, to steal the whole stand. Yeah. And could you imagine having police knock on your door and they're like, hey, your truck was captured here, here, and here, stealing yeah. $80,000 of fireworks? Yeah. 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 Oh, That's my crazy. goodness. And that was just one of them. I'm sure this yeah. is, you know, between that and the Home Depot theft. I mean, this is this is over $100,000 of, of stuff. Oh, absolutely. That was yeah. Well, the next one from the Who's the Jerk file. Okay. <laughs> An article from Fox4Casey.com talks about the theft of Merriam, Kansas. Before every Independence Day, dozens of volunteers coordinate an enormous array of 1,500 American flags along Merriam and Johnson drives to honor area veterans and fallen first responders. And every single year, including this year, someone steals some of those American flags. 11 of the $30 flags were stolen last year. So, John, who's the jerk? I mean, I who does that? They are a big jerk, whoever it is. I mean, I've seen um, some pretty impressive displays like that, and it really touches me. I mean, in particular, I've seen a lot of them around cemeteries, but it doesn't matter where they mm. are. People take the time to set up 1,500. I mean, that's like a vol- a major volunteer effort that's going on. Oh, yeah. And then someone comes by and starts taking the flags. That's insane. Why would you and- do that? I don't know. When I was going through stories, I actually saw quite a few stories like that. And this yeah. is definitely not the only one that's out there. Yeah. I mean, it's You're- in all likelihood, it's probably teenagers that have absolutely no idea how disrespectful they're being probably. Yeah. But it's not like flags are expensive, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, you know, a buck or two at Target or a dollar eighty eight at Walmart. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, you can just steal it. Dun, da, da. Yeah, yeah. Man, <laughs> I don't kidding. know who Please the, who do the jerk is, but that's not a good way to celebrate the fourth. I mean, no. dis- disrespecting the people that help keep this country free. Exactly. Well, it's one thing to steal fireworks or even flags, Danielle. But what about stealing a town's entire fireworks show? That's what happened in 2017 in Great Falls, Montana, when four men stole the commercial fireworks that were going to be used in the city's annual display. The charges and sentences that the men got ranged, uh, two of them got over a year in prison time and hundreds of hours of community service. Interestingly, several of their charges wound up being related to possessing explosives, Mm -hmm. which commercial fireworks certainly can be considered to be. Thankfully, the fireworks were stolen on July 3rd, which gave the company that the city hired just enough time to bring in replacements for their show on the 4th. So they did still wind up having their celebration. You know, what's so interesting about that is I actually also stumbled across that uh, particular case and they did get the fireworks but they couldn't sequence the fireworks because that had also been stolen. Oh, wow. So they they did have their show, but it was a willy-nilly show. (laughs) Willy-nilly fireworks. (laughs) Just going off whenever, wherever. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that they made those guys do community service, though. That's like the perfect thing. I mean, they also spent some time. One of them, I think, got... I think the highest sentence was 18 months. But um, community service for doing something like that, very fitting. Really, really makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So who is going to win this month? Now is your time to vote. There's a little I. Who had the best stolen on the 4th of July story? 
That's right. And we will be back August 1st with our next episode. For this one, we are looking into criminal doctors. And I want to give a big thank you to Mariah for suggesting that. We'll be reaching out to her. And Mariah, you're going to get a photo with uh, signatures from both my Danielle and myself for making that suggestion. Thank you so much. And while you're waiting for the next episode of Crime After Crime, consider checking out Moms and Murder, someone that we actually had the pleasure of being beside at CrimeCon and we got to meet them. Here is an example. Hey guys, it's Melissa and Mandy with the Moms and Murder podcast. We're a true crime podcast that's sure to make you laugh without compromising the seriousness of the content. Mm. Despite our name, we aren't just for the moms. Our show is for all the Diet Coke drinking, chicken loving, Dateline watching people in your life. Come for the murder and stay for the witty humor and pop culture references. And you never know, you may even hear from some of your favorite names in the world of true crime, like Dateline's Josh Mankiewicz. Do you have a preference on what we call you, Josh Mankiewicz, Manx, Sir Manx a lot? Uh, I don't hear Sir, Sir Manx a lot quite as often as I. <laughs> I can make it happen for you. <laughs> Broken Homicide's Derek Lavasser. Are you tearing up on me? I saw you. Like... <laughs> so beautiful, everything you're saying. <laughs> or even America's sweetheart, Ali Sweeney. The neighbor suggested that perhaps Kathleen had been attacked by. An owl. The owl theory um, that Melissa and Allie Sweeney Stop believe. Again, <laughs> so judgy. Check out Moms and Murder anywhere podcasts are found. You guys can also find us on our YouTube channels and social media. If you type in just Danielle Hallen on YouTube, you can find me or on Twitter. I think I'm Danielle Hallen YT. Either way, I just think type you're just in. Danielle Hallen. I looked See, at that. Yeah, because you said that every last time, time I'm already I'm always confused every time, <laughs> every single time. <laughs> and I'm Lord and Arts, wherever you want to search, just search Lord and Arts, you'll find me or you can search Brain Scratch is another easy way to find me. Uh, also, you can submit ideas and we're going to try to be better about um, sending out uh, a picture and signatures to people that have submitted ideas. It's kind of something new we're doing. Basically, in the downtime we had at CrimeCon, I had Danielle signing like crazy. So I've got a nice little stockpile. But if you'd like to submit ideas ideas, possibly get one of those signed pictures, you can email us at crimeaftercrime at lordandarts.com or visit us on Twitter at crimeafterpod and tell us your idea there. Crime After Crime is produced and hosted by Danielle Hallen and John Lorden. And as always, we want to say a massive thank you to our patrons. They're the ones who allow us to have limited ads on YouTube and no ads on the audio version. Plus, our patrons get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly. It's always a blast to film those and talk to you guys in the comments. Plus, all of our new patrons also get a personal shout out and an upcoming Patreon special. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. We need help growing. We cannot do that without your awesome reviews. Thank you if you've done it in the past and think about doing it again in the future. And do not forget as well that we also have a merch store. You guys can go to teespring.com and that's spelled T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G forward slash stores forward slash crime after crime. Happy 4th of July, you guys. Stay safe and crime free. And we will see you guys next time on Crime After Crime. Yeah, no synthetic marijuana. <laughs> have, no, a, have, a, have a happy, safe 4th. Take care, everyone. Bye.